of last year, the federal government rolled out plans to ensure the use of liquefied petroleum gas LPG as cooking fuel grows from the current 5% to 90% in the next 10 years. The government expressed concern that over 900,000 people are negatively impacted annually from the use of kerosene, firewood, and charcoal in cooking across Nigeria. But with the current hike in price, how is this feasible? My guest, Christopher Imamole, is the Ado of Abaji, an educationist, a university professor, a serial entrepreneur, a business mogul, and a Nigerian politician. He is the founder of the Joint Professional Training and Support International, JPTS International, a unique foundation, a non-profit, non-governmental organization. He was a presidential candidate on the platform of the Accord Party for the 2023 presidential election. Thanks for joining me, Professor Imamole. Yeah, thank you. All right, now, you operate in the oil and gas sector. What's really going on with the price of LPG, really? You know, um, it's very interesting to look at the price of LPG gone up from May 2021 from um, 2071 to May 2022 to 3000, and now we are in October, a 12 liters kg, 12, 12.5 kg, now cost about 12,500, 10, 10, 10, um, sorry, 10 kg. So you see that initially, when the price of um, LPG dropped, it was basically due to the international global market that had over 76.1% drop in prices at that May 31 this year there was an, a general drop in price in the global market. And that global market price also impacted on Nigeria, where uh, our package dropped from 730 to 417 Naira. Mm. So we enjoyed that window for a, a whole lot of time. And a lot of persons were clamoring that, oh, government are doing so well, prices of cooking gas have dropped, not knowing that it was actually the benefit from the fact that the international price by the U.S. Um, energy, I'm talking about the information there, it was an international factor. But we have a lot of local challenge here in Nigeria that would definitely impact on price of cooking gas if we do not have a proper regulation, if we don't, if we don't, if we don't have a proper check meeting in that sector. For example, as you should know, that the local production of our gas from our exploration services can only cater for 50% of the market, half of the market in Nigeria. Mm. It therefore means that we still need to import most of the gases that is being consumed in Nigeria. We are talking about an era where we have challenge in our FX, we have challenge in how investors will do business in Nigeria. So. This, of, of course, would continue to have impact on the price of gas. There are also issues of the middleman racketeering. We've heard a lot of escorts, a lot of stakeholders in the gas sector talk about this. The gas sector in Nigeria is run in a way that middlemen, who are called more like a portfolio investor, would come in, buy gas bulk, and supply same to gas plant owners. Gas plant owners in Nigeria, less than 10% of them can afford to buy bulk. So there is a middleman business where middlemen, portfolio investors, want to maximize profits. And that by itself impacts on the cost of gas supply to consumers. So the federal government we knew actually removed VAT from this sector mm. in a way to stabilize the price. But even with that, Mm. A lot of factors, factors like infrastructural deficits. All right. You know, Nigeria must begin to think about drawing pipes for gas supply. For too long, we, you know, because initially we are a traditional country that believe in the use of fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. But the gas market in Nigeria have been truly educated. We now have a lot of people, not just in the urban area, even in the down to the rural community, who now believe in the use of gas. You know, mm -hmm. long before now, people. We're not accustomed to use of gas. We still run a fossil fuel country where people still use charcoal. We still have that happen, but we have not been, um, and they've not been, and Nigerians have embraced to a large extent the use of gas. Looking at 
the cleanliness of it's not even about the green economy concept or the united nation um diversification or encouraging countries to start looking at running um activities in a way to, uh, to, to to help the climate but we're talking about nigeria's are now beginning to accustom itself to the use of gas mm. so it will be pitiful at this point that gas cost of price will now be going like and we mm -hmm. need to look at these factors so factors like international price price are going up again mm. and it will it will affect the price of gas here okay the middle market and which must be looked into and must be regulated all right we're not saying that portfolio investors should not come in and invest but investment must not be done profit must not be done in a way that because consumers will bleed mm. so regulators must begin to be sincere they must begin to control the activities of All those right. that buy bulk who want to make so much profit from the purchase of um, of gases which eventually goes to gas plant owners who sells to the to the final consumers so right. there is a whole lot of issues the issue of exploration okay which we must begin to look at we have not as a country unless our gas reserve we have enormous gas reserve and it's not too good that nigeria the country who has huge gas reserve in anambra for example anambra has huge gas deposits yes we have we have we have oil wells that are associated oil wells associated oil wells means that these oil wells have gas and crude in it but we still flare most of these gases mm. because we need to begin to engage technology to help us explore gas and ensure that we can serve our markets. If the gas we produce in Nigeria right. can only accommodate 50% of Nigeria's supply and demand needs, then there is a huge challenge. And we, we, we may continue okay. to experience fluctuation, especially on the ice side. All right, price right. Of okay, still looking at it um, in other um, angles. You've talked about what happens in the international market, but uh, if we bring it back home right now, economically, we have the free fall of the Naira and the issue of um, FX, uh, you know, still been like a, a burden for most businessmen. And lately, people have been converting uh, from use of, uh, you know, PMS to using LPG for their cars. Have all of these factors also affected the price of um, LPG in Nigeria? Definitely. The price of diesel, which is AGO, price of PMS, which is the petroleum, the gasoline, you know, at shoot up. So Nigerians are now looking at how do we use alternative energy sources that are less um, expensive. Mm. So we now see many combustion chamber being converted in a way that you can now convert your your combustion um, into a gas a gas use and use gas. So that by itself also has um, increased the need and the demand for gas. Mm. So that is what we are talking about. So the need and the demand for gas by itself, and looking at the supply we have, Nigeria is the country is blessed with gas. We have so much gas reserve. We should have the highest gas reserve in Africa, even as compared to Libya and Angola. But we have not been able to effectively tap, have investors, regulate them to understand the need to explore gas for first our local use. So there is a, a, a stretch or a stress on that on the demand of gas. And let me let me say this: During the previous administration, I believe that the price of kerosene was intentionally increased to encourage Nigerians to use gas, mm. because what actually led to Nigerian massive adoption of gas was a particular era, if we must remember, where kerosene was so. You know, we had we had um, stations that we knew that there was a time that almost all the filling stations stopped selling kerosene because. Mm. To a large extent, the highest percentage of Nigeria home were using kerosene as stoves to cook. But there was a particular time where the price of kerosene was so high, that was one of the major factors that switched the mind of Nigerians to begin to use gas, which was cheaper. Now, price of PMS and EGO is not, is not is on the high side. Many industries, many domestic use um, the homes, and even cars are beginning to look at gas option. Like you have said, which I concur with, the price of gas will go up also, which is also a major factor because of the demand. Many, many uh, what's it called, energy utility vehicles, energy generators. There's no power in in most uh, most uh, most communities in Nigeria. 
So Nigeria being a country where people generate power for themselves, so they'll be dependent on either gas, either PMS, and like we are saying, the price of PMS is shooting up after the removal of subsidy. The price of AGO had gone up after the fight, you know. When we talk about AGO, it was after the fight of, uh, what's it called, the bunk, bunk guys in, in, the, in the creek. Because you must know that large percentage of AGOs we use in Nigeria are manufactured from the creek. Yes, you know, these are some of the things. And that is why some of us have advised government that as we begin to encourage building of our refinery, as we begin to encourage licensing modular refinery, we must begin to look at those small-scale refinery that is being used by these boys in the creek. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an illegal operation, but we can begin to look at it. Those are our local, 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 what's it called, local technology here. We can begin to look at this and begin to bring in research, bring in technology to help in looking at this small-scale refinery and begin to license it. So that Nigeria can, by themselves, have small-scale refinery beyond just a modular refinery and the bigger-scale refinery, like the one being built by Dangote, like the Wari refinery, like the LMA refinery in Port and the Cardinal refinery. We can begin to look at this small-scale. Yes, it's an illegal operation, but you, a, 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 a country can look at around it and begin to legalize it, license it, control it, because what is most important is to make sure that we meet our energy demand. And when we begin to do that, we we'll begin to have less stress on gas, and that will also help to stabilize the price of gas. Okay, Professor Imamolen, I'm really, really very worried, as uh, most Nigerians are, because uh, there are worries that it could actually soar higher as much as um, 18,000 Naira by December. You know, the association of uh, the liquefied petroleum gas, uh, they were in the news not too long ago, and they talked about um, how terminal owners are actually making the most of um, um, the opportunities, as it were. You know, what can we do in the interim? Because uh, this is October, and we hear that by in the next two months, it could go as high as uh, 18,000 uh, for uh, 12.5 kilograms. What can the government begin to do in the next uh, days and weeks? Yes, to begin to quickly regulate the activities of terminal owners. Begin to look deeply into the activities of the middlemen because that is a short-term um, short intervention. Mm. The short-term intervention is to begin to have meetings, have consult, what's it called, discussion with terminal owners to make sure that, yes, you are going to make profit, but we should not make the consumers bleed because mm. that by itself affects the economy. Because this is more like the only succor that many homes now have. If that is not done, you know, people are going to revert to the use of fossil fuel because that is already happening. Mm. And when that happens, it will not encourage the green economy, the green, um, what's it called, sustainable um, um, environment, we, we, that which is part of the plan and, and what Nigeria has signed to with the United Nations. So there must be immediate discussion with, with portfolio investors. Government must begin to invest also, NMPC must begin to look at this sector. I'm talking about the um, the what's it called the LNG. Mm -hmm. Must begin to look at this sector and begin to invest temporarily to succor it. While we are looking at producing, if the local production we have in Nigeria, local production for gas can only serve half of the market, mm -hmm. then it's, it's 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 an issue because the like you have said, which I agree with, that. The price of forest, look at what is happening to our yeah. forest, our exchange rate. 50% of the demand is still being sent, brought into Nigeria, cost of logistics, you know, and the rest of it will definitely impact on this. So while we are trying to battle with that, mm. there must be an immediate um, intervention right. and discussion, harmonization with the portfolio investors. Okay, lastly, now, uh, very quickly, Prof, uh, as we round off the show, in passing, you mentioned the NLNG. You know, over time, you know, 
what can we do to ensure that uh, their capacity is actually uh, upgraded so at least they can be? Because like you said, we have um, enormous uh, gas uh, potentials and supply across the, the country. How do we begin to make sure that the NLNG is actually harnessed and um, they can, their capacity can be built so that Nigeria can actually get beyond this 50% that you had talked about? Yes, um, one is immediate encouragement of in, of investors. Investors in those industries need to be encouraged. I'm talking about those in the exploration services now. We need to give that sector more priority by ensuring that we give waivers. You know, like countries like Malaysia, where you have five years tax waiver for those who invest in oil and gas. Mm. We have that happen in some sectors in the U.S. and some other countries. We need to be looking at tax rebates. We need to be looking at things to attract investors in that reg regime, in that sector. Yeah, people want to invest in that. We need to look at the, the, the double taxation, the rigid, um, the rigid, uh, what's it called, the rigid, um, what's it called, policies that surround licensing in that area. Mm. And again, we must discourage gas flaring. The NLNG, which is an arm of the the Nigerian Petroleum and the NPC must begin to look at how to also ensure that the what's it called the the private oil and gas companies mm. who are involved should totally stop the gas flaring. Most of these gases can be used converted to what we use as our domestic um, cooking gas, and that comes with a lot of. I know it's a huge investment, right. but it is investment that should be done. Encourage investors to reduction or reduction of the bottleneck in licensing, mm. bringing in investors and encouraging them by looking at tax reduction, tax waivers in certain right. um, areas, uh, yes, and huge invest, investment in infrastructure. Infrastructure is key. Okay. We still, people still move gas from Lagos to right, Let's start building pipes. Mm. You know, we have pipes from, from Russia to, to Canada. We have pipes that have been moved, that are moving gas all over the world. We look at the the Nige, the Nige um, issue, and many of many people will liken it to the pipe that moves gas from one country to another. Nigeria must begin to look at huge All investments right, huh. in because that's the way forward. All right, thank you so much, Prof. You couldn't have said it um, better. We have been speaking with uh, Professor uh, Imumolin. Uh, he is a serial entrepreneur, and he is also the founder of uh, JPTS and, of course, Unique Foundation. Many thanks for all of the input you have brought on the show this morning. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Academia Business Insights will return to your screen same time tomorrow. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.